Good day, my dear students. Let us start our discussion for today. Have you heard of Pico de Loro or Bird's Peak, a famous scenic spot here in Maragondon? How was this majestic beauty captured? Yes, it is captured using a camera. Today, we will be discussing optical instruments. Optical instrument is a device that uses light to function. What are examples of optical instruments? We have the camera, photocopier, magnifying lens, LCD projector, telescope, lighthouse, microscope, even our human eye. To fully understand the principles behind optical instruments, let's do Activity 7. For this week, our competency is to identify ways in which the properties of mirrors and lenses determine their use in optical instruments. For our activity, using mirror and lens lab simulation, you are going to construct a single convex lens setup for an optical instrument that will be assigned to your group. Each group will be assigned one optical instrument with an expected image and set of questions to be answered. For example, magnifying glass, expected image, enlarged image of the object, and upright. Questions. What is the importance of the optical instrument? Specify the field or industry where it is used. Where is the object located to produce the expected image? What is the comparison between the magnification of the lens and the image observed? What is the concept or principle behind the lens setup? For photocopier, the expected image is same size as the object but inverted. For camera, the expected image is reduced and inverted. For projector, the expected image is enlarged and inverted. For microscope, the expected image is enlarged and inverted. For the human eye, the expected image is reduced and inverted. At the end of the activity, it is expected that you will be able to submit the following outputs. The lens setup, the screenshot of the lens setup via mirror and lens lab simulation. Answers to the questions given via PowerPoint presentation. And the group's oral presentation to be saved as MP4. Our discussion should focus on the following questions. What is the importance of the optical instrument and specify the field where it is used? Here are some examples. In the field of photography, camera is used to capture memories, information, and sceneries. In the field of education, research, science, and business, a photocopier is used to produce multiple copies of a document. If you want to present a business proposal or a research proposal, you can use an LCD projector. Where is the object located to produce the expected image? For the camera and the human eye, the object should be placed beyond or farther than 2F prime. For the photocopier, at 2F prime. For the LCD projector, between 2F prime and F prime and for the magnifying lens between F prime and lens. What is the comparison between the magnification of the lens and the image observed? For the human eye and camera, since the image is smaller than the object, the magnification is less than 1. For photocopier, the image has the same size as the object, so the magnification is equal to 1. For the LCD projector and the magnifying lens, 
since the image produced is larger, the magnification is greater than 1. Let us remember that for a microscope, the focal length of the eyepiece is greater than the focal length of the objective lens. The first image is a real, inverted, and enlarged image of the object. And this image becomes the object of the eyepiece lens, wherein the final image is a virtual, upright, and enlarged image. For a refracting telescope, the focal length of the eyepiece is less than the focal length of the objective lens. The first image is a real, inverted, and reduced image. This is the object of the eyepiece lens, which produces a final image that is virtual, upright, and enlarged. Emphasis is also given to vision defects. Nearsightedness can only see nearby objects clearly, while farsightedness can see far objects clearly. Nearsightedness or myopia is characterized by an elongated eyeball. Since the eyeball is elongated, the light coming from the object falls short from the retina, producing a blurred image. To solve this problem, a concave or a diverging lens is placed between the object and the lens of the eye. The concave or the diverging lens spreads the light rays before they enter the eye so that the image will be formed on the retina and a clear image will be generated. Hyperopia or farsightedness, on the other hand, is characterized by a shortened eyeball. Since the eyeball is short, the light rays coming from the object falls behind the retina, which is a blurred image. In order to correct this defect, a convex or converging lens is placed between the object and the human eye. The convex or converging lens makes the light ray or the light rays bend toward each other a little before they enter the eye so that the image is formed on the retina. It is also important that we know the similarity between the human eye and the camera. Looking at the screen, you will see that the human eye produces an inverted, reduced, and real image at the retina. Same as the camera. The camera also produces an inverted, real, and reduced image of an object. Aside from the similarity in the image produced by the human eye and camera, they also have similar parts like the film for the camera and the retina for the human eye, diaphragm and iris, aperture and pupil, black paint and choroid. Aside from the lens and the image formed to be similar, parts of the human eye and camera have similar functions. Eyelids for human eye and shutter for camera cuts off light. Pupil and aperture are openings where light enters. Iris and diaphragm control the amount of light. Retina and film are the location of image production. Here are other optical instruments. A pinhole camera uses a hole to allow light to enter a small box. The image is seen on the back portion of the box, which is an inverted, reduced image of an object. 
Take note that a pinhole camera proves that light travels in a straight line. A periscope, on the other hand, uses plane mirrors. The image is produced by the reflection of the light on the surface of the mirrors. A binocular uses convex lens and prisms to produce the desired image. Now, let us summarize what we've learned today. How do mirrors and lenses produce image? Mirrors use the property of light called reflection to produce an image. Reflection is the bouncing of light as it strikes the surface of a material. Lenses, on the other hand, use the property called the refraction to produce an image. Refraction is the bending of light when light passes through the boundary between two media of different optical densities. Now, let us compare the difference between converging and diverging optical devices. Converging optical devices allow light to meet at one point. For a concave mirror, when light strikes the surface of the mirror, the reflected rays meet at a point in front of the mirror. A convex lens refract light and meet at a point behind the lens. Diverging optical devices, on the other hand, scatter light. A convex mirror reflect light away from each other. A concave lens scatter light away from the center of the lens. How is magnification related to the image produced in mirrors and lenses? So the magnification is greater than 1 if the image is enlarged, less than 1 if the image is reduced, and equal to 1 if the image is the same size as the object. How does the location of an object affect the image produced in mirrors and lenses? For converging optical devices, as the object moves closer to the device, the image becomes larger, from real to virtual, and from inverted to upright. These tables show the summary of the image produced by a concave mirror and a convex lens. Looking at the tables, we can see that as the object moves closer to the concave mirror and to the convex lens, they produce the same image in terms of size, type, and orientation. For diverging optical devices, as the object moves closer to the device, the image is always smaller, upright, and virtual. These tables show the summary of the image produced by convex mirror and concave lens. Looking at the tables, we can see that at any point with respect to the mirror and the lens, the image is always smaller, virtual, and upright. Let us always remember that the properties of light, like reflection and refraction, play a very important role in the use of optical instruments. That ends our discussion on optical instruments. I do hope that you learned something from our discussion. To end our session, let me leave you with this quote. Let us be like convex lens. Let us magnify only the good deeds and positive traits of the people around us. Thank you and God bless.